if you're looking to keep track of your buying power requirements for trades, go to the cap rec window in your positions tab. So went to positions here on our tabs and then cap rec in the top right. Click on that. Sorry, I already jumped the gun there. But uh, once you're in your cap rec window, we're going to see based on that account we have selected. So it's our pink account or our purple account where we had that Netflix trade. We can see our buying power requirements for all of our trades. You know, if you're trading naked options or strangles or undefined risk spreads, um, you know, that's where you can maybe check out and say, hey, you know, what's taking up all my buying power right now? And it could be potentially that, you know, there's an earnings announcement coming up or, you know, there's some big corporate action going on with a particular symbol and those margin requirements might have been heightened by our clearing firm or our uh, risk team as well. So good place to check out to see your buying power requirements for your positions. But then also for those of you trading in portfolio margin or, um, you know, trading PM, as we like to call it. What's really nice here, and um, we should have a little article there that we can link out, but in our risk analysis tool, if we make sure and check box all of our positions here, so check in all those positions, and then after you've done that, go to the top here and go to risk analysis. This is going to be our risk array layout. So. I could go into a lot of detail here on PM and how the risk arrays are actually calculated and how this is used by our risk team and how margining is, how this actually dictates the margin requirements for portfolio margin accounts. It's a whole deep dive. Um, it'd probably take us into the late nights, but just to kind of give you guys a basics of what this is actually doing here. So we had our, our different symbols, our different trades. So we had our Netflix trade. Um, here, we actually had a, a, just a share in RIVN too, but uh, this is actually showing us based on different implied volatility shocks, as well as movements in price, where our theoretical profit or loss on this position would be um, for, and then it's just based on um, Black-Scholes options pricing models. So in this case, you know, we're looking at this uh, spread here. And based on our totals row here and looking at these rows up here, we're saying if we look at, and you know, this is getting a little muddy, but uh, let's go to this row right here. So we're focusing on this row right here. What is this showing us? Well, first it's saying, okay, let's talk about a scenario where the price of Netflix is, um, or and actually that's in our totals row. Oh, sorry, I am blind today. Okay, yeah, we're hitting the end of the day. It's getting rough. But uh, okay, here we go. So we're actually going to redraw this because I added in that, that a little bit more. Boom. But so in this scenario, we're looking at, hey, if Netflix was trading at a price of 450.28, which is a 20% down move in the underlying, what would be my theoretical profit or loss change for the day here? So in this case, you know, if Netflix went down 20% on our long spread, yeah, we're going to be at about, uh, we're going to depreciate about $175 on that trade. So same goes um, for this total rows here. And maybe let's pull up this pink account just to show you in a little more granular detail. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, and so now we selected this other account that's got a lot more trades in it right now, a lot more uh, current open positions. But what's really great about this tool is instead of, you know, we're just looking at one position there, if we wanted to look at our entire portfolio, of all of our open positions, futures, um, equities, you know, cash settled indices, all that jazz, where our profit or loss for our net portfolio might look like based on these different moves up and down. We can see the totals row here is showing us, you know, if based on all of our positions we have open in this account, if uh, the you know these symbols generally went down about four percent or ten percent in this case, based on the certain risk profiles of each symbol, that uh, you know you know where your net appreciation or depreciation might go. And so the yellow boxes, good question. So the yellow boxes in these, it's 
it's applicable to portfolio margin accounts. So margining for traditional reg T accounts is based on predefined percentages as well as, uh, you know, subtracting or adding in debit or credit received. Um, and then when you get into PM, it's a risk-based approach. It's not based on a certain percentage of the notional value. Instead, PM is saying, hey, we're looking at kind of this, the overall risk of all the positions in your account. And we're testing based on Plaxchel's options pricing model of, you know, if there is a 20% up or down move for in your portfolio um, or in the market right now or different shocks, you know, what is the most you could potentially lose that day? And that is actually what dictates what your margin requirements are in a portfolio margin account. So uh, those yellow boxes there are actually showing you, um, in this case, if we had, if this was a portfolio margin account right now, we're actually, this is a reg T account. So the margin requirements are a little bit different, but Theoretically, if it was our um, our actually our buying power requirements for all the positions in our account right now would be about three thousand bucks or three thousand one hundred bucks. Whereas, I mean, let's check it out right now. How much is being held up um, in the cap rec? So right now it's about eleven thousand bucks to hold all these positions in collateral. Um, whereas, you know, if we were trading in a PM account it'd be about a quarter of that. So and that's where it's like PM as you're hedging positions and um, you know, it's essentially taking account of all the different directional bias from your portfolio and kind of netting it out to say, oh yeah, you know, you hedge this position. So your requirements are less. Whereas, you know, if you're trading a spread that's uncorrelated or inversely correlated to another symbol, you would hope that maybe the margin requirements would offset, but in a reg T account, it's just based on fixed percentages. Um, they wouldn't offset each other like in a PM account. So uh, we have some nice uh, resources on our help center for PM that you guys can definitely check out. But, um, and yeah, awesome. David's tossing it in there too. So cool. And I see the question came in. Yeah, yeah. So the essentially the totals here, it's looking at the worst case scenario. So in this case, uh, you see here based on these different percentage moves, you know, if, it, if we are hitting the bottom side, you know, we could potentially appreciate 17K here. But essentially the worst case scenario is that, um, you know, these symbols based on essentially a one one not strike but essentially a one level up move on the the risk array here saying that this is kind of the worst case scenario where you know it's greater than these two negative losses so then our buying power requirement would be 3100 again that's for portfolio margin uh the account equity requirements for that is 175000 um, to sign up with our clearing firm and 150K to maintain. So for some of you with a little bit of a larger account, it's definitely very nice and I would check it out. But um, you know, if you're working off a little bit less, it's gonna be out of reach for right now. <laughs>